Hello, we're Malta, and we're going to discuss the, the effect of, of the book on the price of some pictures. So, so here we've got this book by Nicholas de Piro, who is a mar Marquis who has lived in England and lived in lives in Valletta, and he's taken a lot of time to put together this book. This is the second edition, and he hasn't started off by saying oh we'll do a book about Maltese painters because the problem with that is that a lot of the paintings in Malta of Malta are not by Maltese paint painters uh, they're of foreign nationality and so so he's by, by saying the International Dictionary of Artists who painted Malta he's dragging in all of the foreigners who who've painted Malta as well as the local people. So that then leads to other questions. Um, of course, it's a voluminous book and he's taken great care. And it's quite interesting for me to, to, to look at the entries because I might be incorrect, but you, you can detect favour and preference as you'd expect. And on some of his favourite um, artists, I think he's gone to, gone to great, greater lengths and greater illustrations than some of the artists which he perhaps doesn't like so much. I'm sure that's not dishonourable. I'm sure it's not intentional, but I think it's your, your, your own views. If you have your own book, your own views are bound to, to rub off. Um, so before I get into Apap, Willie Apap, I'm going to just discuss this issue about Caravaggio. I, I have a dislike of the, the Caravaggios and Malta because they're they're sort of um, dominant and occupy the, the top of the, the, the top of the uh, echelons of, of, of the paintings people know about here in Malta. And I think that the fact that he was Sicilian or Italian, I can't remember which one, like Preti, uh, I can't remember whether the Sicilian or, or Italian, um, given that Italy wasn't a country then, Italy was 10 kingdoms or whatever, uh, they, they were in Malta working for the for the the knights indirectly or, or the church indirectly or directly. So so they, they were imported painters painting imported scenes. That's my personal view. Um, I haven't seen much of Malta in any of the Caravaggios or Preti pictures. Yes, they were working for the church or the knights or within the apparatus of the knights. So I don't really know how much credit they should have. Of course they're good painters and they're fantastic works of art, but it seems a shame for Malta really to, to have those Caravaggios so highly held because they're not really Maltese pictures. In a way, in a way, in a way they are Maltese pictures. And, and people get flock to the St John's Co Cathedral and they want to see the beheading of St John. Of course they do. It's, I've seen it myself. It's a fantastically large picture. And uh, it's in wonderful surroundings. And you, you could put any picture in that, in that spot, it would look fantastic. You could put the worst picture in the world there in that spot, it would look wonderful. Um, the, the Caravaggio pictures to me are sort of, if I was being really, really mean, a sort of a wallpaper. Um, the, there were so many Italian school paintings of religious subjects around that, that, that they're, they're rather samey and somewhat unoriginal. And um, you've got Dutch influence, you've got Italian influence, all sort of mixed up, Spanish influence. And uh, the, all the, the religious ones are, are sort of coded and the, the, the artist can't really stray too far from the, the religious subject. They do, and that's why they become notorious. But you know, Caravaggio was a, was, a, was a convict, a murder. He killed two people, and he was, was in Malta because he was a fugitive. And uh, the Knights of Malta gave him a hiding place, essentially, on the basis that, that they would get free pictures. That's what it means. I'm sure he was paid in, a, in some form. I'm sure it wasn't presented like that at the time. But it's a really grubby, nasty deal. And the Knights of Malta, there was never, there was never one Maltese Grand Master. I've tried to find one, and I can't find anywhere a record of a, a Maltese Grand Master. Yes, there were Maltese Knights, 
but there was never a Montes Grandmaster. So these Grandmasters, who were appointees by birth, a lot of them were just planted as uh, as Grand Master. They were here in Malta, and they had they had the the slaving business. Yes, they were a um, order of chivalric knights to defend Christianity against Islam coming from the the east. But if you look at what really happened way after fifteen sixty five, it became quite decadent. And if you, if, you, if you go to the house of this person, Nicholas de Pira, there's a sedan chair, which is a good, really good uh, object because it shows that the knights became decadent and were carted around by servants and treated uh, like, like uh, a French emperor, for example. So, so I have a dislike for the Caravaggio stuff and I have a dislike for the Pretty stuff. And in this book, I was really pleased to see that this is hardly mentioned. I'll show you the entry. I hope I don't get done for copyright. Maybe he's so important that he, the book's not big enough for him. I don't know, he might be the other way around. Um, you know, the, the Knights of Malta had slaves, had galleys full of slaves, and they were pirates. They, they would take ships from, uh, other nations and they would take prisoners and they would sell the prisoners back in the, in the form of a ransom. They would take Christian slaves, they would take women slaves and children slaves. And the slaving here was in Malta was going on right to the end of the uh, 18th century. So they're up to the neck, neck in it. So we'll find the Caravaggio entry and see. That's it. That's all there is. And on the next page you have uh, Paul Carbonara has got an equally important entry. So I think it's quite interesting. Some people won't find it interesting, I think it's interesting. So I really anyway, I really like the book. I met I met this gentleman once. I wasn't didn't I was one of the one of the tourists in his when he'd been showed showed around the the house fifteen years ago or something. So I know him, I don't know him personally, but I know I've I've met him and I like his house very much. I think he's got a nice taste and he's got some good stuff in his house, he's got some old stuff and some modern stuff as well. And he's done a really nice job in looking after that property, to his credit, with his wife. And um, I think this book is a fantastic production. And anyone in Malta, even going to try to understand the paintings, should have this book. Very, very helpful. So now we're going to turn to this Apat person. The brothers, Vincenzo, Vincenzo Vincent and Willie. Um, Vincent did the Triton Fountains and a number of other sculptures and lived a long time in Malta. This brother went to um, Rome as a student and ended up staying there and his life was disturbed by the war and uh, nevertheless he had a shorter life and was, was a good artist. So let's look at this painting. So this Willie Appat did this oil on board of the ferries and this is the place where the magic kiosk used to be. And this lovely picture, it's one of the biggest pictures, one of the biggest pictures in the book, shows this fantastic scene of ferries showing a ticket office that the Maltese guy saw, let's say, some people waiting to get the ferry over to Valletta. It shows some trees, it shows some beautiful low rise Maltese buildings with lovely green shutters. So it's a really beautiful picture, and because it's in the book, it means it's worth more money. That's what I'm trying to get at. And when I sell it, at 8,000 euros, when I sell it, the buyer is going to have not only the picture, they're going to have, I'll give them the book. They'll have the book. And it means that the item is a, is a gilt-edged, rock-solid investment. The, 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 the one drawback with this picture is it not, it's not actually signed Willie Appap. It's been marked Willie Appap. And I think you could, you could tell it's Willie Appap and uh, all the ingredients are right. It's come from a good source, framed from modern Malta, there's a little cut out from a newspaper. It's got the right sort of feel about it, though the frame isn't original. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it is a wonderful item and probably should be reframed at some stage. So it is an app, app though it's not signed. 
by him. I don't think, unless there's something underneath the mount, his signatures are really patchy. I've noticed William Pap's signatures are scratchy and often they're very hard to read. Um, but we have this beautiful picture. Now, without the book entry, this picture would be four to five thousand euros. Uh, because it, it, its ranking as a, as a, as a co collectible picture would, would drop back. Uh, and that's really what I'm trying to talk, talk about in this video, the effect of the book. And when we sell to normal customers, now when I say normal customers, I'm meaning members of the public who don't know about art, who want to perhaps dip their toe. They, they really want to have something they can appreciate and show off, and they want to buy something which they know is real. And that sounds obvious. But that is, is very much the, the, the case. And with this sort of background, I know that, very, that that will be quite not easy to sell. It's not quite right, but it'd be easier to sell than if it didn't have an entry in the book. Because there's no guesswork. And um, they're not going to take my word for it. The English in, in Malta are telling pictures that they want something a bit more meaty and substantive. And, and, and this book gives the picture the, cre the credence it needs. And it's... it's uh, obviously helps me hugely. So I find the buyers in Malta who uh, are not in the, within the trade or who are not academic do tend to want to have this sort of authentication. If they're buying a print, they want it signed, they want it numbered. If they're buying an oil painting, they like, they like to see a name. And I think that's fine. Um, if I go and buy a car, I don't know what's under the bonnet. I haven't, I haven't got a clue. I will rely on the Log book, I will rely on what the dealer says, says it is. Whether it's a 1200cc engine or a five litre engine, I wouldn't know the difference. So, so it's the same thing in reverse. And I, and I think it's nice to have stock like this. And the stock I've had in the past like this has always been the stuff that's sold for the, the quickest. This is another apart picture. This has a nice signature and is dated. Um, and it's of a similar scale. Uh, scale. Uh, this is not in the book. This is not even Malta, this is Rome where he lived. Um, but you'll notice, the angle of this key is rather similar to the angle of the track. So he has a technique, at least in these two, where he is using this sort of simple form of perspective to, to give him a head start. And it's quite successful. I think they're, they're both very nice pictures to look at. Aesthetically pleasing, they're soft, they're um, friendly pictures. Um, this picture here is 5,000 euros, it's less money, because it is not in the book and it is not uh, of Malta, but it, this one it has got a good signature. And it nevertheless is a, please, a pleasing picture. These are the sort of pictures, which are going to go up in value. These are the sort of pictures which are less likely to fall in value if there's a, if there's a swing in the market. And uh, with regard to the, again, again, going back to the book, with regard to this book, there, are, there is such a variety of, um, product in the book. George Large, all the way through to the Victorian pictures, the modern pictures. There's so much choice of artist that, that there's something for everybody. And in, just in closing, there are some art critics and some dealers who seem to like everything put in front of them. And I think that if you like everything in the book, um, I think that's not 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 really very good i think that if you're taking your own opinion there will be some things in here that you don't like or shouldn't like and there are obviously some things that you prefer i think if you just say you like it all i, I don't think that you're, you're you're forming a proper opinion you can't you can't be right that you that, a, that, a, that an art lover would like everything everything in this book they have to be different degrees. I can appreciate everything's commercial. I can appreciate everything is uh, wanted by somebody. But there are things in here I don't like. Though I respect them for what they are. But there are, there are some things I just don't think are very good. And, um, and there are, of course, things in here I think are fantastic. This is the nature of the business, the nature of the fun of, of, of collecting antiques and antique pictures. Okay, so we've had a look through. I hope you found my comments interesting. Bye-bye.